This is an anime recap video, and in this video, I'm going to show you a guy named Laos, who, with his party, Marcel, Chilchuck, and Senchi, gets stuck in a dungeon and decides to eat monsters. It all starts with the discovery of the dungeon in a small village. One day, a rumble in the ground causes a rift under the cemetery, from which a single man appears. He claims to be the king of a once prosperous kingdom that fell 1,000 years ago in the dungeon. He states that the once glorious land continues to be held captive deep underground by the hands of a mad magician. In his final words before turning to dust, the man declares that he offers his entire kingdom to the one who defeats the magician. In the present day, an adventuring party of six battles with a large dragon. The dragon proves too much for them, and they can't handle its movements and attacks. Although they made thorough preparations beforehand, they walk into a trap, losing not only time but also three days worth of food. Their leader, Laos, also realizes that due to hunger, his party lacks their usual prowess, and they cannot defeat the giant dragon. Just as he thinks of withdrawing from the dungeon, his sister named Phelan knocks him out of the way and gets bitten by a dragon. In a last-ditch attempt to save the party, she casts a spell from inside the mouth of the dragon and sends everyone outside of the dungeon. After some time, Laos wakes up on a field, feeling hungry after fighting the giant dragon. His party member named Marcel, an elven mage, informs him that due to a magic spell, they got out of the dungeon. Everyone is safe, but Phelan is missing, and he wonders why their belongings, including the food, did not come. Hearing this, Laos tells her that she was eaten by the dragon, and due to this, her magic didn't work from inside the dragon's stomach. He then asks her to go save Phelan in the dungeon, but she resists, stating that without food, they can't save her. Their other party member, Chilchuck, tells them that they also lost the other two party members who resigned from their party. Hearing this, Laos realizes that exploring dungeons costs money, including hiring companions, buying equipment, and obtaining food. He wonders if he can sell all the equipment of his party to get the desired money. However, Chilchuck shuts him down. They then head to the nearby market and decide to eat some food. Laos tells them that he wants to save his sister and, for this, he will throw both of them out of the party and sell their equipment. This way, he will get enough money for one person to travel to the dungeon. He also tells them that this was his fault from the beginning and can't put their lives in danger again. Hearing those heartfelt words, both Marcel and Chilchuk decide to save Phelan, with Marcel stating that he's strong in magic and Chilchuk is an expert in opening doors and disabling traps. They insist on following him, however, Laos tells them that they will secure food in the dungeon, including eating monsters. He further explains that carnivorous monsters will have herbivorous monsters to feed on, and the herbivorous monsters eat plants, which means humans can eat in the dungeon too. Hearing this, Marcel doesn't take the idea well and begins loudly protesting it. Just then, another party runs from a mushroom monster and passes them, with Marcel killing the monster with her stab. Seeing the mushroom monster, Laos picks it up and decides to cook it for lunch. When asked how he will do it, he shows them a dungeon food guide that has all the information about edible monsters. Suddenly, Laos hears the sound of a giant scorpion and decides to head there. Just then, the narrator tells us that despite being in a dungeon, Many people come and go, making it a bustling place for adventurers and merchants. A place called Formal Cemetery was once a sacred place where villagers slept in peace, but once it connected to the dungeon six years ago, it became the liveliest place in the village. The rumors say that monsters emerged from the depths of the dungeon, unclear to everyone whether it was due to a forbidden spell that transferred terrestrial creatures or if they were summoned from the world of monsters. After the brief explanation, Laos attacks the giant scorpion and kills it. Seeing this, Chilchuk asks him about his intentions of eating monsters from the beginning. However, Laos tells him that he wants to save his sister too, but he also loves the monsters, including their appearance and cries of their ecology, and now wants to know their taste. After that, they gather some water and start making the mushroom and scorpion food. They cut them. His shouting draws the attention of a nearby dwarf, named Senchi, who tells them he knows how to cook this scorpion. Upon his arrival, he starts teaching them how to prepare the giant scorpion and mushroom properly for cooking. After adding a few more ingredients from his pack and from the dungeon, he realizes that he is missing something. He gathers some plants with roots and decides to add them to the pot. However, Marcel does not support the idea. Before they can add the ingredients to the pot, a slime covers Marcel's body. It covers her face and tries to squeeze her breath, but Senchi kills it with his knife. Not only this, he also tells them the method of finding slime body parts, including heart and mind, and how to kill it. After that, they also add the slime to the pot, 
And once the meal is ready, it's quite delicious, and everyone loves it, including Marcel. After finishing their meal, they finally introduce themselves. Leo shares his mission with Senchi that he wants to rescue his sister and slay the dragon. Hearing about their goal to slay a red dragon, Senchi expresses a desire to join the party. He also tells them that cooking a red dragon has always been his dream. They welcome him, though they ponder the ethics of eating a dragon that consumed a person. Just before they head to the inner parts of the dungeon, they conclude that there's no hierarchy when it comes to consuming dungeon food, and eating is simply the exclusive privilege of the living. Moving through the second level of the dungeon, filled with tall trees and connected by wooden bridges, Leo's party encounters minor incidents due to the unsafe terrain. Leo suggests setting up camp for the night. Mentioning soup makes Marcel drool and hunger, but her frustration stems from the concept of consuming monsters. She sighs, stating she will eat anything edible but objects to all of Leo's suggestions for monsters found on the second level. She refuses to eat any monster that is unhygienic, a goblin, or just made of metal. Chilchuk remarks on the irony of her claiming she's okay with anything yet rejecting all options. But Marcel believes her request for something normal like birds or fruit is reasonable. Leos responds that unfortunately, what she wants must be hunted for. She apologizes, having seen his point. Senshi will hope. However, to her annoyance, the plants turn out to be man-eating plants. Leos corrects Marcel, explaining that not all of these plants consume people. He points out a species that only captures animals to use as fertilizer. Marcel suggests using people as fertilizer too, to which Leos responds that even the vegetables she eats are composed of dead bodies if traced back. Chill points out fruit on the nearby plants to Leos, and they note that they will have to fight the plants to get to their fruit. Marcel steps forward and begins casting a spell to destroy them, but Senchi stops her. As she turns to respond to him, a plant captures her. Senshi then explains his rule on taking only what you can eat, which Marcel thinks is untimely advice. As Marcel is drawn upwards by the plant, she bumps into another plant that spits out a partially digested man. She angrily shouts at Leos for correcting her previous assumptions, but he responds that digestive capability is species-dependent, and that the one that had captured Marcel was a parasitic type, which does not comfort her. Leo swiftly defeats the plant by slicing it at its root, freeing Marcel, to which she responds in thanks. He is curious about the plant's ability to hold without killing or letting its prey escape, asking Marcel how it feels, but his suggestion that it would feel good angers and disturbs her greatly. The rest of the party picks some fruit off the plants and returns to the hollow where they made camp. Senshi begins preparing the fruit, trimming out the seeds. Leo's attempts to pocket the seeds, but Marcel notices and disposes of them in the fire. Senshi cooks up both ripe and unripe fruit, slime, and the leftover scorpion soup in the frying pan, making a tart-like dish. Leo's and Chilchuk dig in, but Marcel is suspicious. Having confirmed that nothing from the man-eating type plant was used, she takes a bite and finds that it tastes good. She muses that having such delicious fruit seems disadvantageous for the plant as other animals would want to eat it. But Leo's explains that the carnivorous plants use the fruit as bait. He is happy at Marcel's burgeoning curiosity, but she is not. As the party cleans up after dinner, they think about what to do with the man they rescued from the man-eating plant. Marcel suggests she revives him, but Leos thinks it will fail. They decide to place him where he will be easily seen, putting him in the middle of the pathway. But Leos doesn't think he stands out enough. The man is hoisted up using a rope. The image is unfortunately rather gallows-like, but they call it a day. Like and comment if you enjoy this video, subscribe to my channel for more anime recaps, and tell me what anime recap you like to see next in the comments below.